The Menu is a brand new movie that will make you never trust a professional chef ever again. Let's talk about why. Hey guys, I'm Carl. Welcome to my movie film show. Feel free to subscribe down below if you would like to, but we're here today to talk about a brand new movie called The Menu. The Menu is a new movie by director Mark Mylod, who's previously directed stuff like Entourage and Shameless and even Game of Thrones. But in terms of movies, his most notable credits are What's Your Number and Ali G in the House. What a movie that is. The movie stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, Rafe Fiennes and even John Leguizamo in there too, which is a decent little cast. The movie is about 12 people who go to an Island to a restaurant on a secluded island to experience the finest of fine dining, sort of fine dining only the most elite people can ever get to or eat, consume, whatever you want to call it. And the movie starts out very much like a foodie movie. They've got some fantastic shots of the food and throughout the movie they showcase different courses and they even show up cards with the food on it and what's in each course. However, as we get further into the movie, things start to twist and change and suddenly we don't have a foodie movie anymore, we've got a thriller on our hands. And the interesting thing with this movie is going into it, I didn't know too much about it, I don't think anybody did because they kept it very secretive about this movie. Any interviews you saw about the movie, they are fairly quiet about it. Anya Taylor-Joy was on the Graham Norton show last week. When it came to talking about the movie, she very much kept her cards close to her chest. Even the trailer did a fantastic job of keeping some of the key points hidden about the movie. They give you a flavour of what the movie is about, but don't quite show you everything. On IMDb, interestingly enough, under the categories, the movie is listed as a thriller, horror, and a comedy, which I would say it only counts as a thriller, really. It's got horror elements, I guess. It doesn't have too much comedy, although it did have a few chuckles throughout the movie. It's not a laugh out loud movie. It's not a gore fest. It's not a big horror movie. It's a very, very interesting thriller movie. With a bit of social commentary thrown in there as well. But as I mentioned, they did a very good job with this movie of keeping their cards close to their chest so that when most people went to this movie, they weren't really prepared for what was going to happen. And there comes a point in this movie where the movie switches to being a thriller movie and there was a clear gasp in the cinema that I was in. Some very good twists and turns throughout the movie there's a lot of intrigue throughout the movie and it's a movie that had me gripped all the way through even to the point where there was one point where I needed to go to the bathroom and I really didn't want to go because I wanted to watch the movie I didn't want to miss anything the movie is more or less a one location movie it's got some bits at the start and some bits at the end outside the restaurant a little bit in the middle but overall for the majority of the movie it takes place within this one location in the restaurant one location movies like that are quite difficult to keep people's attention all the way through the movie and this one does a fantastic job of that i think all the way up until the very end you'll be gripped by this movie this movie is very unique in itself. It's got elements of shows like MasterChef where they're showcasing this fantastic food that you'll probably never eat in your lifetime because it only looks like art, it doesn't look like food. It's all foam and little ball thingies. You definitely wouldn't be full after any of these meals. It's almost as if Gordon Ramsay was taken to a whole new level and became a psychopath. You could also make comparisons to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory dialed up to 11 because all these people come in and they all get something they weren't expecting as they go along because some of them have broken rules or some of them have had a bad past and they're getting their comeuppance here. And on top of the interesting shots of the food and that element of the movie, one of the key things in this movie is the standout performances from Anya Taylor-Joy, she's truly fantastic, and Ray Fiennes. Who knew he could play such a good villain? Ray Fiennes is fantastic in the movie. He's so intense at times, but he can also be funny at times too. He's really dialed in this movie and I'd be very surprised if at some point he was nominated for some award because he's truly the standout performer. Anya Taylor-Joy of course being the protagonist he's very good in the movie as well and Anya Taylor-Joy has really been on a hot streak lately. She's been in some fantastic projects in recent years. From Queen's Gambit to Last Night in Little Soho to the North Man earlier this year and now The Menu she's really hitting gold with a lot of her projects. Nicholas Holt is in the movie as well as I previously mentioned and I don't think he's going to get as much praise as Anya Taylor-Joy and Ray Fiennes but he fully deserves it because his performance was fantastic in this movie. The story in the movie is quite interesting, keeps you gripped all the way through. The performances are fantastic as I mentioned, some of the visuals of the food in particular is great, but there's something about the end of the movie that just left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Now I'm not saying the ending is bad, I'm not saying the movie is bad, but when I left the movie theater, I left the movie theater in silence and I just got in my car and I just drove. And I started thinking about the movie and I just kept thinking about it and I went home and I started making a coffee and while I was brewing the coffee I was thinking about the movie even further and then I was lying in bed all night and I was not sleeping and I was thinking about the movie. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? The movie kept me guessing all the way through. It kept me wondering, kept me figuring out the ending. There's certainly parts you can nitpick about the story but overall the movie had me gripped from beginning to end. Had me constantly guessing what was coming next. Does that make it a great movie? The story wasn't flawless, the performances were fantastic, but 
is it one of the best movies I've watched this year? So in order to address some of those points, I'm going to delve deeper into the movie and there's going to be spoilers from this point out. So if you haven't seen the movie, pause the video, go check the movie, come back and then tell me what you thought about the movie. But now we're going to talk about some spoilers. So there comes a point in the movie where Ray Fiennes talks to Anne Taylor Doyle's character and she's not supposed to be there because she was a last minute replacement for Nicholas Holt's guests. And in that little talk, he says to her, are you with us or are you with them? Because those people constantly take they don't give back they're all self-centered more or less is what he's getting at you know you've got the food critic you've got the investor guys you've got the the old guy who's cheating on his wife you got this self-centered actor ray finds his character has deliberately picked his victims and anya taylor joy wasn't supposed to be there she was the last minute replacement so he's trying to figure her out so come the ending anya taylor joy has been in his house she's seen his pictures on his wall and she has put it all together of how to get out now one question i had when i left the movie theater is why didn't everyone else just do what anya taylor joy did send the food back say it wasn't good and ask for a cheeseburger because that's how she left she connected with ray fines and he allowed her to leave why didn't everyone else just go i also want to send back the food I, I think it's shit too. Give me a cheeseburger. Well, firstly, Anya Taylor-Joy wasn't supposed to be there. Perhaps he had some remorse towards her, or he had a reason for killing everybody else. But then I started thinking about that, and I started thinking about, well, what about John Leguizamo's assistant? Why did he pick her? He even addresses her at some point in the movie and just says she's unlucky. At some point, addressed that she's been stealing money from her boss. So maybe she has that reason for being there. But then you've got the old man who was cheating on his wife and had that encounter with Anya Taylor-Joy's character which we're told about what about his wife what's she done why is she there she's just another unsuspecting victim an unlucky victim but the reason he lets Anya Taylor-Joy leave is because she gives something back to him in asking him to make her a cheeseburger she reignites that passion he had when he was young when he was flipping burgers and he had that big smile on his face in that news article she gives him back that small passion of giving someone that great service, that great perfect burger. She reignites that flame inside him and gives him something back and therefore he lets her leave because everyone else just takes and takes and takes and that's why he's doing what he's doing. The other question I'm then left with is why do all the chefs go along with it? What does he have over them? Sure, they all want to be the next big thing and they all want to learn from the great chefs, but why would they all unquestionably follow him like that and do everything he asks and not go, well, this is this is weird. Why would I want to be part of this? You do get some points in the movie where some of the sous chefs get to talk. One of them is the first victim of the movie. And one of them, the female sous chef later on, she tells us it was her idea for everybody to be killed at the end of the night. And she's quite proud of that. But why are all the other chefs going along with it? They don't quite address that, I don't believe, in the movie. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment section below. The movie certainly has a lot of questions. And as I mentioned already, it's quite gripping all the way through. Keeps you engaged all the way through. And it's certainly a very interesting movie. A lot of food for thought in this movie. Many more of those food puns can I fit in? But overall, we gotta get down to the rating for the movie and as i mentioned gripping all the way through fantastic performances some fantastic visuals in the movie a story that when you go into it if you haven't been spoiled by reviews like this review you won't see some of the things coming you won't see some of the twists coming now there is one twist you will see coming because it's very obvious it's the one with the coast guard coming in looks like he's gonna save the day and turns out spoiler alert he's part of the show but overall i think the movie had so much going for it the story was very well told very well acted and it's a very enjoyable movie for the most part but there's just something about it that makes it not quite a top movie and for that reason i'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 a very solid very enjoyable movie which i'd highly recommend checking out and another movie i watched fairly recently which is a very enjoyable movie was the black phone if you haven't seen that review it's right over here to check out and if you've already seen that review there's another video to check out right over here checking out more videos really helps my channel it's really appreciated and you're awesome if you do it